In this video, I'll be replacing the speed and reference sensors on a Porsche 944, along with demonstrating some common tests to ensure their proper functionality. Some signs that you may have a failing crankshaft sensor include hard start and no start conditions, intermittent stalling, engine misfiring, uneven or poor acceleration, and decreased fuel economy. The 944's engine management system features two crankshaft sensors located at the rear of the engine on the top left side of the clutch housing. The first sensor closest to the front of the car is known as the reference sensor, and it's labeled as position B on the aluminum mounting bracket. The reference sensor detects a single set screw on the flywheel to determine the position of piston number one relative to top dead center. As the flywheel rotates, the DME computer uses this sensor to determine the initial crank position to synchronize ignition timing. The second sensor closer to the firewall is labeled as position D on the mounting bracket, and it's referred to as the speed sensor. The speed sensor reads the crank angle changes by counting the teeth on the flywheel ring gear, and it provides a signal to the DME computer in the form of pulses to determine engine speed in revolutions per minute. Using the combination of signals from the two sensors, the DME computer can determine where the engine is positioned at any point in its cycle to apply the correct fuel injector cycling and ignition firing. After initial cranking is complete, the speed sensor signal is also used as a safety feature by the DME to cut off the fuel pump if the engine speed falls below 300 RPM. So as you can imagine, if there's a problem with a signal from either of these sensors, it can cause significant starting and running problems with the engine. As a side note, if you happen to see a third sensor sitting just below the speed and reference sensors on the same bracket, this is actually a diagnostic sensor that Porsche dealerships used many years ago. Since it no longer serves a purpose, you're welcome to delete it, but at the time, it would read the other two flywheel set screws that reside on the plane closest to the crankshaft, and the sensor corresponds to the diagnostic plug attached to the engine support bracket at the rear of the camshaft assembly. The crank sensor wiring routes up and over to a metal bracket behind the intake manifold, where we'll find three electrical connectors, two rectangular ones for the crank sensors, and a round one for the O2 sensor. The crank sensor harnesses are often labeled with little yellow tags as BG for the reference sensor and DG for the speed sensor, which correspond to positions B and D on the mounting bracket respectively. The wiring harness continues off towards the right side of the car where it passes through the firewall and down to the DME computer in the passenger footwell area. Electrical signal problems are often the result of aging or damaged wiring and connectors, so the first thing you want to do is perform a visual inspection of these components. The rubber connectors tend to harden, crack, and crumble over time, exposing and damaging the wiring inside, so it's a good idea to inspect those areas closely, along with the full length of each harness. Any noticeable damage or exposed wiring here would warrant replacement. If the visual inspections check out okay, some resistance tests can be performed on the sensor connectors to verify proper functionality. The sensor connectors are locked in place by metal spring clips that can be pushed aside using a small flathead screwdriver, and then the connectors removed to reveal three terminals inside each sensor plug. Using an ohm meter, the terminals should be tested for the following resistance readings. Pins 8 and 27 on the speed sensor should provide a reading between 600 and 1600 ohms, and pins 8 and 23 should read greater than 1 million ohms. Pins 25 and 26 on the reference sensor should read between 600 and 1600 ohms, and pins 25 and 78 should read greater than 1 million ohms. Any readings outside these thresholds would warrant further inspection or replacement of the sensors. With the sensor plugs reconnected, similar resistance tests can be performed at the DME computer's electrical connector in order to determine whether or not output signals are reaching the DME. Since we'll be working with the car's electrical system, we'll start by disconnecting the negative terminal on the battery, and then the DME computer can be safely disconnected. To access it, all we need to do is pull back the carpet in the passenger footwell area, remove the screws securing the wooden kick panel, and behind it, we'll find the DME computer attached to a metal bracket. Next, the DME connector retaining clip can be pushed to the right while pushing up on the DME connector to disconnect the wiring harness so the resistance test can be performed. With the DME connector's wiring oriented to the right, the connector terminals are numbered 1 through 18 from right to left across the bottom row, and 19 through 35 from right to left across the top row. From here, the speed sensor signal can be tested by applying an ohm meter to terminals 8 and 27 on the plug, where we should get a reading of between 600 and 1600 ohms. The same test can be performed for the reference sensor using terminals 25 and 26. If you're unable to get a resistance reading from either of these tests, that would indicate a problem with the wiring between the affected sensor and the DME computer. For any cases where the crank sensor wiring isn't properly labeled, or if the electrical connectors have become confused during sensor replacement or other work being performed on the car, this test can also be used to differentiate between the two sensors and identify which wire goes to which sensor. To determine one from the other, simply disconnect one of the crank sensor connectors and test for resistance across pins 8 and 27, and then 25 and 26. If you get a reading at 8 and 27, you'll know the connected sensor is the speed sensor, and that should be installed at position D on the bracket. Conversely, if you get a reading at 25 and 26, 
That'll be for the reference sensor, which should be installed at position B on the bracket. And finally, another way to check the operation of the speed and reference sensors is to crank the engine and watch the response on the tachometer. If the tachometer bounces during cranking, the speed and reference sensors are probably in good condition. If the tach doesn't bounce, it indicates a problem with the speed and or reference sensors or the DME computer. In the case of the speed and reference sensors, the issue could either be a failed sensor or an improperly set clearance gap on the sensor bracket. Once the testing is completed and you've determined that a sensor replacement is needed, you'll first want to disconnect the negative lead from the battery once again. Next, disconnect either the speed or the reference sensor connector at the back of the intake manifold. When replacing the sensors, it's best to disconnect and change one at a time so that the connections don't get confused during reinstallation. From here, you can remove the sensor retaining bolt from the mounting bracket, which will either be a 5mm hex head socket or a 10mm metric bolt. Since the bolts are tilted back at a slight angle, a universal joint helps provide better access to the hardware. Take special care not to drop the bolt into the flywheel inspection hole at the top of the bell housing during removal. It's now time to twist the sensor from side to side while pulling it up and away from the bracket. If the sensor won't move, hit it with some penetrating spray and let it sit for a little while. These sensors have a bad reputation for getting stuck, but it can help to twist and push the affected sensor up and back down repeatedly to get it moving. Once the old sensor is removed, a new one can be installed in the reverse order, with the mounting bolt torqued to a value of 8 newton meters or 6 foot pounds. A note here that the 944 turbo cars use a figure 8 shaped spacer beneath the speed sensor, and you'll want to transfer this over to the new speed sensor if you're working on a turbo car. The NA cars won't need the extra shim, so the sensors can simply be replaced in those cases. Both the speed and reference sensors use the same part number and in fact are identical, apart from their placement on the engine. If you need to adjust the sensor gap on the mounting bracket, a washer of 0.8 millimeters in thickness can be glued to the bottom of an old sensor and temporarily installed at the speed sensor position. There are also some aftermarket gapping tools on the market that can be used to set the sensor height with a 0.8 millimeter gap. Once you have an appropriate gapping device on hand, there are two 6 millimeter hex socket bolts on the mount that allow you to adjust the height of the sensor from the flywheel. The locking bolt to the left of the mount locks it in place, while the pivot bolt to the right allows the height of the mount to be adjusted. From a hardware perspective, the locking bolt is an M8 by 25 millimeter bolt, and the pivot bolt is an M8 by 30 millimeter bolt. With both of the bolts loosened, the sensor with the washer glued to it can be installed and tightened to the bracket. The bracket can then be tilted down until the sensor touches the teeth on the ring gear, and then the locking and pivot bolts can be secured. With the bracket properly adjusted, the old sensor can be swapped out for the new one, and the mounting bolt can be torqued to 8 newton meters or 6 foot pounds.